So coming into the season, two of the top four teams in the preseason odds market to win the Big Ten were Oregon and Michigan. And neither one looked very good on Saturday. Not all hope is lost, but there needs to be some improvement, adjustment over the course of the season, which can happen. I'll talk about that in uh, just a moment because you don't really have to go very far back into the archives of the Jedi Order, or sorry, of college football, and figure out who has not played great early in the year and then had a great finish to the season. But Michigan, late in the game, at home against Fresno State, who's a good Mountain West team. Yeah, that score was 16 to 10. The final score was 30 to 10. The defense eventually clinched it. Quarterback play, pretty underwhelming for the Wolverines. That was our question coming into the year because Sharon Moore didn't name a starting quarterback, uh, of course. And I don't know. Maybe, maybe those guys will improve. Maybe one guy will separate himself. But the early returns wasn't very strong. And if you thought that was bad, Oregon was much worse. And I mean much worse. So Oregon, for those who missed the game, played Idaho. Now, there was a time when Idaho was an FBS school. They have a win in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl, which is perfect and beautiful when you're talking about the, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Americana of college football. Idaho, famous Idaho Potato Bowl, W. They've won that once upon a time. Uh, Those days are behind them because they play at the FCS level. And Oregon went into Saturday's contest as a more than 40-point favorite against the Vandals. And last year, Oregon played a team on that field from the same conference Idaho's currently in, the Big Sky, and beat them 81-7. to And so everyone figured, well, Bo Nix out, Dylan Gabriel in, no problem. Maybe won't be exactly the same, but I mean, come on, that's gonna that's going to go great. Final score 24 to 14. Oregon needed, for those who did not see the game, a fourth and seven coming down the stretch in the fourth quarter with 540 to go. They draw Idaho offsides, pick up a fourth and two, get a touchdown, clinch the game. That's what they needed against an FCS school. This is not Colorado playing North Dakota State where Colorado's fighting to be a bowl team, North Dakota State is a preseason number two nationally in the FCS ranks. Idaho, good program right now. Jason Eck, probably going to be a power four or group of five head coach coming to a school near you. So just keep that name in your memory banks. In no world, in no world, should this game have been even close. And Autzen Stadium, I was there in the press box, it had to roar to life in the fourth quarter. They, they had to bring that Ohio State kind of juice to help their defense because they needed big stops. And it started out all fine. A stop for Oregon on defense, a touchdown, a stop, and then all of a sudden Idaho flipped a switch and Oregon turned a switch off and played four truly embarrassing quarters of football. It was bad. The starters played the entire game. Wasn't good. Wasn't good. Oregon should have won that game by 30, 40 points. They didn't. They didn't. It was ugly. Offensive line play, huge issue. They allowed five sacks all of last season. They allowed three in the first half, including a fumble or a strip sack of Dylan Gabriel that led to a fumble recovery by Idaho. They did that in the first half. Idaho. Idaho. Not Boise State. Not Oregon State. Not Ohio State. Not Washington. Not Michigan. No. Idaho. That has to change dramatically. Michigan's got to be more dynamic on offense and figure out the quarterback position. Oregon has to figure out the offensive line. Here's the silver lining and why I don't think the season for these two teams is automatically over because of a bad week one showing that ended up resulting in a win. Both teams have plenty of chances, most notably Michigan's upcoming game with Texas at the big house this week. That is college game day. I think justifiably so. They will have plenty of chances to make everybody, by the end of the year, forget these games happen. Or you look back and go, how did this team play down to that level? Oregon's in the Big Ten title game. How did they they let Idaho hang around with them? Michigan went went 10-2. and How did they let Michigan's... What if Michigan beats Texas? You're going to look back and go, wait a minute. Fresno State was just in there pushing them. 
Fresno State's in the same conference as Colorado State, and Colorado State lost to Texas 52 to nothing. College football doesn't always make sense. Does not always make sense. But those questions have to be answered. They, they have to be answered. And if they're not, you will not see Oregon in the playoff. You will not see Michigan in the playoff or in the Big Ten championship game. It'll be Ohio State and it'll be Penn State. And we'll see who else can rise to the top of the conference. Because those teams did not impress in week one. The good news is twofold for those fan bases. Number one, it's week one. Number two, it was a win. It was a win. There's a survive and advance component. This is not college basketball. That's locked on college football for those watching on YouTube that you can uh, see the little the little logo for over there that the network makes for me, which I'm very appreciative of because I think it looks great. There is a feeling of, boy, you got it out of the way. Is that the dud game? So back to the remark I made earlier. Last year, Alabama, granted in horrible weather conditions, these are not one-to-one comparisons, Alabama was in a dogfight early in the year, figuring out their quarterback position with South Florida, who ended up being a respectable team in the American Conference. Alabama was one fourth stop, one fourth down stop away in the Rose Bowl against Michigan from playing for a national championship. Does that make any sense? Does that make any sense to have a one score win on the road or not, bad weather or not? Does it make sense? That you, that you are struggling with South Florida and then beating Georgia at the end of the year and going to play for a national championship in the college football playoff semifinal? Doesn't make any sense. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. That's college football sometimes. That's the sort of progression that Oregon and Michigan now have to come up with. Oregon's got to fix the, fix the offensive line and Michigan has to be more explosive on offense. Well, explosive isn't the right word. Let me retract that particular word. They have to be more dynamic on offense. Because 16 to 10 late in the game, or Oregon 17 to 14 late in the game against vastly inferior opponents. And again, Oregon's is much worse because it's an FCS opponent. Fresno State is at least a group of five. Neither one of those fan bases should feel good coming out of week one. There's a lot to work on. But you know what the good news is? There's a lot of time. The advantage for Oregon, they have Boise State this week, who put up 56 on Georgia Southern, but gave up a lot. Less than 56, but they gave up a lot of points. Michigan, on the other hand, you don't have as much time to fix this because Texas is coming to town. And they looked like a well-oiled machine over the weekend when they took Colorado State and punted them like Jack Black punted Baxter in the first Anchorman movie. You better figure it out quickly. Oregon doesn't have as much time as they think. They've never beaten Boise State, always been a thorn in their side. Boise State's still the preseason favorite and should be to win the Mountain West. And Ashton Genty went for 267 yards and six touchdowns in the win over Georgia Southern on Saturday. Then they have to play Oregon State. They've not won at Reeser Stadium since 2018. Michigan State and UCLA did not look good. And then Ohio State comes to town. You don't have as much time as you think to get this stuff right. You've only got a handful of chances. But the good news for both these teams is it's early in the year. And the issues that that I saw, they're not widespread in that there are just a couple of things that need to be fixed. They're major issues. But it's not like Oregon's defense was terrible. It wasn't. It's not like Michigan's defense was terrible. It wasn't. You, you have half of the ball solved. You got to fix just a couple of things on the other side of the ball. It's not like the potential isn't there, but you got to find it. And that's what they have to do now as they go throughout the season.